message is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. At 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, multiple unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. Discovery Houston, 20 seconds to LOS Tetris. The first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and life, and you will return to those realms. The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstripped our collective comprehension. Broadcasting from Forest Tower Studios, all the way from the Deep South. Now, here is your host, Joe Root. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek Bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void. Thank you guys so much for joining us wherever you're listening from across the world wide web. If it's Talk Stream Live, the Paranormal Radio app, tune in the Fringe FM app. The call-in, listen line, whatever, wherever. Thank you for listening to the show tonight. It's Cosmic Conditions, the new moon with Mary Ducina is back. Mary Ducina, the mother of the show. I say that, right? My, my witchy mama is going to help us with these forces of change that are happening right now. This awakening that's going on. And uh, I want to give a shout-out to the sponsors, of course. At ancientlifeful.com and get the tea.com and also metaphorical archaeology. And uh, metaphorical archaeology, this is something that I think you really need to take advantage of right now, especially if you got any uh, uh, traumas or emotional issues. It really does work. I can tell you, being uh, who I am as a Cancer Moon, like I've I've spent my whole life making sure that I stay. Um, emotionally, I guess you could say balanced or whatever, right? Because when when you mix, you got fire and water. When you mix those two things, it's hard to keep them balanced. Good thing I got, uh, you know, I got some Libra in my chart too. But uh, we all have emotions, not just people with emotional signs. And sometimes we've had things that happen that have happened in our life that's caused us a lot of trauma that we carry on throughout our lives that affect our friendships, relationships, our careers, and stuff. And we don't deal with them. And um, the, this method will help you deal with that. It'll help you deal with any type of post-traumatic stress, anxiety even. It's a 70% success rate proven with vets as well. So, yeah, you want to you wanna do this. It's worth it. And if you've had any type of experience from a paranormal event, uh, crazy spiritual happening or something that's caused this type of emotion in you, then you can get that session for free pro bono via metaphorical archaeology. You want to give... Uh, Barbara, a call at 214-995-3754 or search Metaphorical Archaeology on Facebook. Also, head over to ufoseekers.com, backed and supported by the Fringe FM. That's the only people that you need to go to when it comes to ufology. That's right. Tim Doyle and Tracy, they're doing it. Go to YouTube. Go check out their new stuff. Tonight, Mary's with us. The website, MaryDucina.com, M-A-R-Y-D-U-S-I-N-A, Changing Lives everybody loves you i get emails mary about the show constantly from people about how That's, cosmic conditions is changing their life how nice yeah there was a there was a couple of very very nice emails that came to me as well and some wonderful i don't go into discord a lot try to give a tarot card or some astrological stuff and i just want to shout out to your discord chat members which is fun for people that like chat rooms. I get too busy for that, but I don't want them to think I kick them to the curb. Thank you for your kindness and thank you for your affirmations and acknowledgments. It's when you do this and you show up and you do this pro bono like Barbara with metaphorical archaeology, it's like we are wanting to be lighthouses in both the storms and the heavenly cascades in your life. You know, those, no matter who we link up with intimately, no matter what stresses or joys, that we have with our tribe of origin and our family, when we reflect back on our elders, people that have passed away in our mind a little too quick for our emotional readiness. Cancer is the time of the year, 
Cancer Moonchild is the time of the year to really pause and take note of those people that are very supportive, that are reliable, that are authentic, and that besides them just getting busy with their own life when they offer things for a tithe or for free or they they make it so affordable, like so many people are doing podcasts, so many people are doing Patreon. It's just everybody's out there doing that, selling T-shirts and all that. But when something touches your heart chakra, I personally, this is just my little humble opinion, I personally feel like the soul, our soul star, likes to hang out at the heart chakra. So I, I know for myself, and I'm just speaking for myself, I know there's a difference between my third eye center and the pineal gland and that, that whole energy, the physical eyes that we work with out of the body temple that our soul, you know, the eyes are the windows of the soul. But then there's heart eyes. And when you see with the, the eyes of the heart, you know, let thine eye be single, you link that center of the heart chakra and the things, the heart knows how to repair itself. You know, the mind gets in the way a lot and sends us all over the place. And it's usually our mind that triggers us with our frustrations and keeps us awake at night, blink, 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 blink. You know, unless you're just a natural nocturnal, then you're not wanting your mind to blink, 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 keep you awake (laughs) during the morning when you're really wanting to go into deep sleep and you don't have to get up because you're a nocturnal. But this is the time to do that pause and Think of three people that everybody should be able to do that. And that doesn't have to be you know, related to three people in your life that when you've been at a crossroads of angst or frustration or fear or need, great spirit, the source of all that's divine and of light connected these people into your life. Now, some may be in the spirit world and even though you're, emotional self feels like they left too soon that you can't just you know talk to them by phone they're training you to talk with them through the heart chakra and through telepathy and in your solitude there's such a thing that i teach my clients about called deep listening and instead of praying or doing ceremony or attending or doing a ceremony most people do that to get answers and i'd like to phrase it this way we've incarnated into a world of questions when you truly connect to the source, to the frequencies of light and harmony and love and purposefulness, then you connect into the world of answers. So this second new moon at the 28 point something, 29 degrees, if you're looking at Sabian symbols of moon child, ruled by the moon, grandmother moon, cancer the crab, is a waterfall effect of divine source, divine alchemy, shape-shifting, being able to literally step into some bold new ways of last month. We talked about the inner child, you know, the, the new moon that was at zero point of Cancer the Crab. This one, a lot of astrologers have been saying, I've noticed on the Internet, that this is a second chance new moon because there, by degrees there's two new moons in this fourth water sign, cardinal sign of Cancer the Crab, Um, I don't see that. That's just me. I feel like it's not a second chance new moon. Saturn's involved. There's an opposition by Saturn. And this new moon with Saturn in opposition, and we've got Saturn trekking back. It's at 28, that 28 degree point of Capricorn. Saturn is like the judge, the patriarch, the, the controlling powers, those that put down these things called mandates and rules and contact tracing and you know, uh, creating this divisiveness among we the people versus the different authoritarian leaders of different countries. So like Joe was mentioning with Barbara and metaphorical archaeology, cancer is about the inner child so that you also become at one with the healer that you are. So the moon, no matter what goes on in our life, when you think about the luminaries, the moon and the sun, We're getting ready to shift into Leo energy, which is going to be our great star of the sun, because Leo is the king queen of the zodiac. But this is those final hours of the only time in 2020 that we're really going to have that emphasis of the solar, the sun, paying homage to the moon. And so this is our inner answers. This is the part of us that knows that we have an empowerment that came from spirit and source 
this is the part of us that feels the breeze of our sacred guardian angel. This is the part of us that can feel the shift when we're drawn to a different archangel as an as a teacher, as a guide, and we tune into Uriel or we tune into Raphael or we start tuning into learning, you know, beefing up our knowledge again about the archangels and what they each represent in general. These are the divining rods of supernatural source. So for you, if that's the waterfall or doing ceremony by fire or getting in the woods, in your meditations, if you would just or in the shower, uh, you know, any, we won't have another water sign effect until we get to Scorpio later on this year. So right now is the time to do some kind of ritual with that goblet of the water and the wine. Like sometimes I'll do a ceremony under the moon where I have my goblet of water and then I have my goblet of, of a favorite wine or, or liqueur that's more of a natural liqueur like elderflower or Chambord, and I'll thank the moon. And I'll thank the moon for all the times, and most people don't thank the moon, but I thank the moon for all the times that I've received comfort, energetic frequency, stimulus, and comfort with the silent times when I was walking by the tree under the moonlight, you know, musing over an upcoming death that was going to happen in my family, that one of my relatives had been deemed terminal, or a friend that was in a crisis point or in a scary point in some kind of abusive situation, I often would go outside and walk with the moon and just talk with the moon and grandmother moon and say, I'm going to walk with you out here. You're my companion. You're my companion. And so we're going to walk together and I'm going to put some of these things in your lunar light and everybody sleeps under the same moon or everybody's awake under the same moon. So I want to honor her and I want to thank that heavenly mothering grandmother energy she's the grandmother of mother earth so i want to take it to the elders and another exercise that i do when i lead ceremony when we're dealing with cancer the crab moon child also known as moon child is i also tell people at the ceremonial fire pause and think about someone that has passed out of the physical body temporal and is in spirit is in a spiritual realm so yes they slipped their skin and went into spirit but they have a footprint in both worlds now. And so when we have a new moon, it's an automatic portal opening. And with this one being at 28, 29 degrees of cancer, the very end of a sign of the 12 signs, we're starting on the 22nd, the Lion's Gate portal is opening up. And so what we have is we're shifting into more light. We're shifting into the sun's strongest sign of Leo you know, as we get into the 22nd. So, I mean, we're, you know, we've, we're there within hours of that all around the world. And so this has to do with the part of us that will be brave hearts and we will start the vision quest and the main adventure, no matter what's going on in the external world, we will start to take up our warriorship, the warrioress and the warrior, and we will take command of what we know needs to be tightened up in our world and sometimes that requires boundaries sometimes that requires full bore authentic discussions with people that matter in our lives to where we say hey because you matter because our association matters because i want this association to continue to be the powerful best version of itself i'm going to speak about an energetic concern i want to make sure i'm seeing this clearly hearing this clearly I want to explain to you that I feel like that I'm being kicked to the curb or I'm not, you know, this isn't being dealt with or somebody's slacking or I feel like that it's not being, the opportunity's not being respected or I need to speak my piece and, hey, however it is, it's okay. But the, the way that it remains powerful and I keep my personal sovereignty and the best of me comes out in this professional or intimate or sensual relationship or parent-child relationship is this is where I'm at, this is what I feel, your feelings matter, my feelings matter, and so they need to be in the atmosphere. We need to honor the air that we wear. And if you look at the external symbols right now, Joe, if you look at the muzzles, the mass debate, the um, zip it, you know, first, at first it was go home, stay in, don't come out. This actual opposition of the sun and Saturn at 28 degrees 
is reopening, and, and the other ones being at 22, 23 degrees, they're reopening what we experienced in January, in mid-January on the 12th when we had that oh, God. planetary Capricorn, yeah. uh, Capricornicopia. You know, it's like when we had that Capricorn caravan parade. So what it's doing is it's giving us, okay, you're at the six-month point of what was triggered with this epic, historic Capricorn spotlight in each of our charts. You don't have to be a Capricorn. It's more intense, like Joe was talking about, if you've got the Cancer Capricorn stuff. Now, back in January, we were still dealing with the Cancer Capricorn eclipses. That shifted as we entered into the June 5th, first big eclipse that was coming up in Gemini, Sagittarius. So here's your key words over the next two years, and we'll, we'll talk about it a lot, but it's now shifted. It's 19 years until we deal with a lot of this Capricorn, Cancer, mother, father, child, parent, you know, authority versus the individual that's gone, pretty much going to go away as far as it being such a paramount soul lesson. Now we're moving into everybody trying to tell us, no, your truth needs to be this, and your perspective doesn't matter. Now there's uh-huh. a debate, yeah, with people's belief. Your belief needs to be mine, or you're a racist, or you don't count. You know, and so there's that. It, it, there's no. It's like there's no discussing it. There's just screaming and spitting, and and you know, let me get even more dramatic and 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 show up with my full womanly power and be the nude woman walking around with all the armed military men. I think it was in Oregon. I forget where it was, just walking around in in her nakedness, which is an ancient, ancient, old custom across many cultures when the women raise their skirts, so to speak, or when the women come forth with the the gates of the temple, you know, the birth canal. So it, it grabs attention. It doesn't just grab men's attention. It grabs attention of like, whoa, that's bold. And... As you know, audience, those of you that are savvy with astrology, and I know a lot of your listeners are, Mars is in Aries. And Mars in Aries, when you think about Mars, and it's so much more than just conflict and war, but when you think about Aries as the Roman god of war, the war energy is in our mouth. It's in our words. It can be a war of words. So we we are benefited if we look at the balance, the polarity sign of Aries, and kind of push ourselves to be more diplomatic like Libra, Libra being the dove, the sign of diplomatic peace, Aries being the hawk, the war, you know, creature that just says, I'll slap you, I don't care. What did you say to me? Them's fighting words. So Aries rules the head and it rules the main five senses. So right now we've got Mars and we've got it aligned with the wounded healer. So it's hard to heal if we keep opening up the wound. So we're going to have to deal with, here's the priority with this Cancer Aries Capricorn thing right now. There's danger in our anger if we don't be really cognizant of what's going on. I I keep thinking about words that begin with the, the letter T. You know, it's like it's time for us to monitor the temperature of what triggers us, where we're touchy, what's at least be willing to look at what triggered you in such a rapid fire way. It's like, whoa, that set me off. I mean, kind of be the student teacher with yourself, with Mars and and, uh, Chiron and Aries right now. It's like, wow, that triggered me. Because the higher side of Aries is this beautiful way to be bold and fresh and bright and just seize the moment and get it done. You know, and people that are procrastinating are like, dang. So that's where Aries and Virgo can be very similar because when Aries sets, when the Aries in our charts get to, and in your charts, if you don't know where Aries is in your chart, if you haven't connected with the astrologer that you have an affinity with, and don't just hit and miss it. I mean, this is the time, the next six months, you need to embrace learning your Earth birth chart. You need to start looking at where you have the signs on what houses, more than just the planets in your houses. You can do the wheel of the year better if you learn your rising sign. That's more, it's, it's more powerful than your sun co- sign in 80% of the cases. And start, okay, right now, uh, Mary and Joe were telling me about Aries. is like where the energy is, where that beautiful, uh, you know, like the comet, you know, it, it was discovered yeah, on March 27th of this year. It's an Aries. It had an Aries beginning. What and drives so it you? Showed, it's your force. It's your sexual energy. It's your passion. It's what gets people's attention. You know, it's desire. like it's, it's, it's everything, a dance desire. Right? It's a desire drive. It is. And so you can, you, in the areas in your chart, if it's in your 10th house, 
then you've got a desire to really tighten up and, and just let the creativity waterfall, there's that word again, cascade around you with this effluvia, with this flow of like, bam, that's a good idea. So there's an inspiration coming right now with the Aries because Mars and Aries is saying, oh, am I meeting up and dancing with Chiron, the wounded healer? Well, I'm Aries. So you've carried that burden too long. We talked last month about the inner child. We did an extra show that Joe's now uploaded and Patrick on YouTube called Healing Your Inner Child. So we talked about walking that back on that pathway and now letting Mars and Aries, you've unpacked that bag, now let's move forward. It You can't change the past, but you can be in control of how the past is trying to inch into your now, which is what really matters, and into your immediate future. So the whole Cancer Capricorn Aries thing, right now that's what I'd look at in my chart. Those three houses, if you have planets in those three signs, that would be the area that will get the cords cut and the knots untangled. So beyond anything else that's going on in your chart right now, don't don't get all hung up on, well, Mars is in Aries. How does that affect my Mars? Don't even do that. Just start with something simple. And Aries is the energetic spotlight. Cancer is the emotional spotlight right now because it's 28 degrees, 29 degrees, so it's got an extra oomph before the sun gets into Leo. And Leo's going to light up everybody's chart in an easier way anyway because the sun's home when it's yeah, in Leo. Brother, it's happy. Yeah, it was two days. Good it's energy. happy. Yeah, it, it's happy and it's creative and it rules the theatrical arts and, and our ability to express our words. But as I go into the forecast with this after Joe takes his first break, I'm sure there's a couple of times where we're going to have these oppositions, these once a year. There's three times this year that the Saturn sun and the Pluto and all that get opposed so we're going to have to get through those, and then I'll tell you the dates of those. We've got an exciting, before we come back together again on the 18th of August, we've got an exciting full moon coming up over the 3rd in Aquarius. So that's innovative, and that's I call it like that's the UFO sign full moon. You know, it's like talk about your UFO seekers. They probably could have the, the most riches, richest uh, week in, of this whole year between like the 2nd and the 8th of August because that full moon will only happen once. And Aquarius, and that's like the higher side of the supernatural. You know, it's just like, dang, that's good. But Cancer, I want to mainly say this to every sign out there, but especially Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra. And let me tell you, and my clients, the ones that are just blowing up my phone are Aries, Cancer, Capricorn, and Libra. I mean, it's like it's the family stuff that's been going on with the sun being in Cancer and where we need to disconnect and tighten it up with the with our blood tribe you know, the family that we have karma with and that we incarnated with for this particular incarnation. But now that we're at this new moon, we have an ability to pull in the paranormal and the supernatural in a really magical way. So like you often hear me talk about my very eclectic mountain mama. So I I called her in and I said, this is that time it's grandmother moon and you're one of the three people in the spirit world that I do pay homage to and in and, and Tennessee, my papa on my father's side. So I'm calling you guys in and my sweet younger brother that passed away in 2003. You're the three that I'm calling in to help me do. And here's the term deep listening. So instead of we often, when we pray, we're petitioning or when we meditate, we do ceremony, we're banishing or we're trying to attract. We're busy. We're given that ceremony or that prayer you know, it's got a job to do. We're out for answers, buddy. We, I want to know about this, and this has been dragging me down. But when you do deep listening, it's a different kind of ceremony. It's a different kind of prayer, and it's a different kind of posturing psychically and, and allowing the empowerment of the guardian angel, the archangel, your, your watchtower guides, and those in spirit, whether it's an angelic message or symbols or whatever you see or colors, it's time for you to do deep listening and give them that pause and that respect to answer you. I would say, yeah, definitely learn the learning the balance between what, you know, sun and cancers like, or Aries and cancer. Uh, it's been, it's, man, it's tough to be honest with you being an Aries uh, sun and cancer moon. That stuff's kind of okay, tough. But Aries but, is fire, right? Aries yeah. is fire. Yep, yep. Cancer is, is water. So it's steam. Yeah. I gotcha. It's so steam. So yeah. learning to balance what you're talking about, about not, you know, being compassionate for yourself as well as others too, is the balance that we need to learn. Like 
that's and it's the the relationship with our with like you're saying our friends family relationships whatever you know you you got to be able to not, don't hold back what you want to say or how you feel or what right. what's been bothering you the most or what you need to do or that great like um idea and don't let and, and don't, don't let, let people let, judge you yeah and don't and if if they do judge you then it's so what that's right? their problem and the because cancer they, listen, energy they can't like, tell you joe they can't they're not in charge of telling you or i about our feelings they're only in control and responsible right. for their feelings yeah and the cancer not energy and i think inside everybody is like that that energy is calling you to speak up with aries energy like hey you know it's time to deal with this now like don't you know take care of yourself you're responsible for your emotions you need to take care of them who's doing what to you let them know if they don't give a damn then guess what they don't give a damn that ought to tell you what you need to do and you don't get me you don't get me if you don't respect me you don't get me if you play unfair with me you're lost now maybe you're fine without me i'm okay with that I'm okay with that because this is also about soul sovereignty and it's got a little bit of, you know, Saturn can be, Saturn is like a judge or a tough teacher. When we don't look at it in the external world, Saturn has a lot to do with Saturn right now in Capricorn with Jupiter and Pluto opposing this new moon is saying, Hey, quiet that riot inside of you. You've got to nurture yourself. Part of your self-sufficiency is how are you weighing in? How do you weigh in for what your needs are, Mars being desires, the cancer being our needs, our emotional needs? So how are you weighing it in, Libra? How are you balancing it? Are you bending a knee too much? Are you giving so much out? And be honest with yourself. Maybe you've been taking too much from people. I mean, let's do our audience 50-50. Mm-hmm. Has this been a 30-day lunar cycle where you you know damn well within yourself that you've been taking more from those friendships and you've been expecting that lover to just shut up about it and let you handle it in your own time and your own way. And you're saying things like, you know, not now I, I will deal with it. I will face it. I'll take care of it with the kid or whatever. It's not going on. It's not, go- I'll, yes, I'll tell my dad, I'll tell my mom, but they just keep putting it off and putting it off. And you're like, Hey, Hey, wait a minute. I told you three weeks ago, this is bothering me. I didn't put a timeline on it. But I'm telling you, instead of you helping me have a nice understanding that you get me and that you get, you know, my frustration about this. In the meantime, in that three weeks, I've been working on my triggers. And when we work on ourselves, then we go, you know what? It's not leaving me. This is a bigger issue than I. This is bigger something than that I maybe thought. I, right. Yeah, exactly. this is bigger than I thought. And so Saturn is saying, yes, I'm the tougher lesson. Yep. I'm the one that says uh, the Saturn. Look at planets as stimulus. The Saturn stimulus is like, yeah, I'm a hard teacher. It's like when you take karate or you start with yoga. It looks really hard. When I busted my arm and had to do nine months of physical therapy after getting metal put in my arm, physical therapy was a bitch. And I had a Virgo physical therapist that had just retired from the Navy. But you know what? She got me there. She got me there. So, yeah, it was tough. Yeah, there were hard lessons. But, you know, when we can start to self discipline to achieve that it's okay if i stop codependency it's okay if i nurture myself it's okay if i at least turn and look within cancer is about turning and looking within what's behind the waterfall you know so if i have intense feelings about certain things and i'm not just so needy that i'm pushing my intensity on everybody else all the time you owe me call me do this or do that i mean you own your own stuff out there people own your own stuff So if you're too easily triggered unless somebody's giving to you all the time or if you're a a master manipulator and you're finding a way to ghost somebody, kick them to the curb, not get back with them, that's not playing fair. So it's time for you. Cancer is about healing the self. So it's time for us to do – it's time for us also with cancer to be able to validate the difference between – and like with this this lockdown – you know, we've had to spend, cancer's the home, it's our shelter. A lot of us have had to really look at where we live, the, the good, bad, and ugly of that vortex. And because we've not, we've kind of been cut off from all the external things that we like to do, it's also made us take a deeper, harder, longer 
look at what we might want to fix around the house, what we might want to paint, what we might want to declutter. Maybe we're falling in love with our place again. Maybe we're looking at our own hometown. Maybe we're looking at, at just driving to some of the local restaurants, you know, when they're not locked down, when there's not this big interference of, of Big Brother's eyes on us with everything. So it's about, because Mercury's still in Cancer right now, Mercury just turned direct on the 12th. So this this week is, and Saturn is at its biggest and brightest because it's retrograding and closest to Earth. There's, there's like five planets visible over the next week and some meteor showers coming up in a couple of days. So Yes, it, it can seem, it can seem, just like the external picture right now with all of us, it can seem to be somewhat limiting and unfortunate, and we're getting kind of, we're getting touchy, we're getting pissy. Frustrating. After being, yeah, yeah. So, but the fears and the frustrations and the pessimism that, that can dog the Saturn aspects in our chart seems, on the first look, to make it seem like a frustrating or an unfavorable time to make a new start with your home, your business, your family, or these emotional issues that have been like a seesaw in your life or a swing that keeps going back and forth but just won't stop and settle. So with Mars and Aries, if we can see that the cancer compatibility to the Aries feature is like, okay, cancer has an empathic, healing, intuitive savvy. It does. If they can get past neediness, the cancer point is like, I have a natural acumen and skill set to be intuitive. So if I keep my psychic nose to the ground, like you're like the hound dog now, the mountain hound dog, and I focus on love, not fear, as the sun exits the sign of the moon and moves from water to fire with its happiest place, the sun has come home in Leo the Lion, the Braveheart, this Wednesday on July 22nd, then it starts to bring a, a fuel. It's a fuel. It's, it's a combustible fuel that'll focus on our individuality. It'll give us plenty of time to strut our stuff, add a little bit of drama in our life, more creativity, and most of all, play. Play. Oh, yeah. If you keep Please. watching what's going on in this external to mask or not to mask, you know, the, you know, the fight of that whole thing and people trying to tell you what your truth is. And it's like, go over there and look in the mirror and talk to yourself about your truth. Cause I'm rolling along just fine. So we've got to, if we have to shield ourselves or put a mask on of anything, it's to shield ourselves psychically right now with everybody else's projections of anger, projections of their fear porn. So Leo's a leader, make no mistake about it. Where do you feel that it's time for you to take that solar energy and allow the limelight and the spotlight to work with you and to let that spotlight be your king or queen put into creative motion because August is going to get off into a little bit of an uncertain start. Mercury is the trickster. When you look at archetypes and the medicine wheel, it's coyote or the the psychic position of being the Hayoka or the clown that sometimes plays pranks or tricks on you, but it's really trying to wake you up going, Oh, I tricked you. I fooled you kind of like a Fox or coyote. So in the first part of August, You want to put your foot down on any type of overt manipulations, you to them or them to you. Notice I'm keeping our own stuff in there too, including the use of verbal force. I would not let that get out of hand in the first four days of August. And if there's people that are trying to pull the little sneaky projecting lies to manipulate just to buy themselves time, then they're they're going to get nailed. They're going to get nailed. July 30th and August 1st as Mercury sits in opposition to Jupiter. Because remember, Mercury's still in Cancer. Very been intuitive. Trying, I've been trying to tell people, like, through this whole phase we're going through, that, like, you're not going to be able to to avoid things nope. spiritually this nope. time. Like, spiritually, and when I say spiritually, what does that mean, right? That means you're not going to be able to avoid your growth, the reason why you're here, and your authentic self, the truth, basically. Well, see, the three eclipses, Joe, the, the three eclipses, two full moon eclipses, and then the solstice, solar eclipse, what they did is they pulled the curtain back because it started in Sagittarius. And it, Sagittarius, then the solar eclipse at zero point cancer, and then we had the July 4th, 5th, and it already seemed like a year went by, the July 4th, 5th eclipse and the patriarchal sign of Capricorn. And again, I'm going to say Saturn, when we have an eclipse, 
in Capricorn. This takes us all the way into Yuletide or December. We've got, first, it, it triggered the things that we've been avoiding, and then we're trying to get a pass again. We're trying to, like, procrastinate, give a little kick. Goes, yeah, I'll take out the garbage, Mom. Yeah, I'll take out the, let me, at the next commercial, at the ne- yeah, I did my homework. Yeah, and they're busy, you know, playing games in the room and lying about the whole thing, and then they've got that pressure, Saturn, to get the lessons done when they get to school. So they're under pressure, under pressure, like that song, under pressure. Yeah. So what's happening with this eclipse, and now that the sun's going, okay, we did our job, the lights did their job, the luminaries and the eclipses said to you, I've shined a big old light in the shadow aspects of that relationship, of that job, of the people that you really don't like doing business with, of the people that really are, are dumping on you and not doing their part of this equation. So if you if you determine that you're going to have a win-win scenario, so it isn't you giving 50% and them giving 50%. No, that's a wrong equation. We have I have to show up and give 100%, and the other person better show up and give 100%. Then you've got 100% of a win. So now that we've had these three eclipses and now this is the new moon, this is the first new moon since that triage of eclipses is now saying, okay, bitches, here it comes. Hope you did your homework. <laughs> Hope you did your homework. Here you, you it know, comes. You know something else I've learned about that when it comes to focus that I've learned I've had issues with is uh, there's this phrase that has come up in my life from more than one person. It's called, it's, it's a phrase that's called get your shit together. Pardon my French, right? You've heard it yep. before, get your, yep. <laughs> but I'm thinking, what, what, what does that mean? Does that, does that mean I need to make a bunch of money? Does that mean I need to be sound and this and that? No, it's everything needs to be st- done. It's all about focus. And, and then I'm reminded in my life and I have been reminded in my life, how things I attract things into my life where uh, certain things I'll have to give my technical focus to this, my emotional focus right. to that, my financial focus to this. And and it's all of these things where it's like, okay, well, I need to focus on one thing at a time here. And when it comes to, um, especially if you're like in a, I would say some type of business or partnership or anything like, can you focus on that? Or do you need to get certain things from everybody else or it, right. all, the, all the narcissistic attitude that happens and trust me everybody has a little bit of it in them if not sure. more sure. uh is sure. going to be brought until they've out, tempered it yep yep you're right until they've deliberately seen that aspect in them and said okay i have discovered the obsessive compulsive i've discovered the brat i've discovered my resting bitch face i've discovered <laughs> you know the narcissist I, that's male and female by the way yeah. gay and straight yeah. resting bitch face in rolling of the eyes or resting bitch face they like mm-hmm. to point out all the time. It's just like, why don't you look at those rolling of the eyes and why they're rolling? Why don't you look at I my resting bitch face? I definitely am guilty of the resting bitch face thing, for sure. Well, but but what, again, my main point of this new moon is try to focus and pay attention. Look a little longer instead of just glazing over it of what triggered in your mind or what was said to you or what was done or not done that triggered the rolling of the eyes of the resting bitch face. And that's where, that's where our soul is trying to say, this did it, this did it, instead of just focusing on the external situation that somebody's complaining about or saying you're avoiding or you're not doing, what triggered you to go into, you know, resting bitch face or the rolling of the eyes? Look within you, it triggered you, it triggered you. That's not saying you're wrong. It's just saying you can get two or three more insights if you'll just pause for a minute going, oh, I went there, I went there. Or when somebody triggers you out in public, you know, like they, you know, there was a server today that showed up at the table. Everything that, everything that the server did was it was a very gentle smile and look you right in the eyes and smile. And they did, they brought cold food. They didn't bring back drinks. They just totally kicked the whole, the reason you go out to eat is to go out to eat. They kicked everything that should have been serviced to the curb. It was the worst service I've ever had, but they thought, I swear they were on some kind of prescription drugs. But they, they, I called, I said, oh, look, we got a floater. It, it, it would float around and just smile so sweet. Like, you wouldn't dare say anything to me because, look, I keep showing up with my little narcotic-induced little smile. So everything's okay in my world because I'm floating around on some kind of drug. And it's just like, hey, let me give you that Saturnian reality check. I'm not good with this. And they smiled at you like like the, the, per, the couple of people I was eating with. They're like, my fries are, like, really cold. And I'm like, send them back. Want me to handle it? I'm, I'm the friend that always does that. You want me to handle it? I can handle it. And I said, I think you should handle it, but I can handle it and show you how. 
They're like, no, no, and they, and they did it real nice. And, oh, and, and again, the server just smiled and floated around, and I'm like, look, it's orbiting. It's just orbiting on some other planet. And I'm friends with the owner of the restaurant, and I'm like, this isn't sitting well with me. Not at all. You don't bring a southern girl when she said, you know, it's, it's Tennessee. You don't bring a southern girl unsweet tea. You just don't do it. <laughs> and, and, and anybody can have an off day, and anybody can make a mistake. I'm a three-strike girl. So when I said, oh, you accidentally brought me because I was given credit. You accidentally brought me because, you know, the spoon's always in it when it's unsweet tea. I don't, I don't drink unsweet tea. I should develop that. I should develop a three-strike rule or something. Oh, absolutely I do. Yeah, three strikes and you're done. And, and it's, not being, now, it's not like you're being brutal, but it's, it's how many well, they times. they can make amends. They how many can times win back do you have to tell somebody something before they care? Uh, exactly. No, I, well, and all I have, you know, me being a Scorpio with a stellium in Scorpio, I have to just go strike one. And that drops down a whole bunch of paragraphs, doesn't it? Strike one. We just hit strike one. What's that mean? Well, you know, I did, go think about that for a while. I'm not going to give you the next paragraph. You yeah. need to focus on how, you, how did you get to strike one? Now, once you figure out what strike one was, I'm willing to communicate with it. Want to go to therapy? Want to talk about it? Want to go meditate? Yeah, but we're not moving past. Uh, we, we just now froze. Strike one happened. We're not going any further. I it's think, frozen right here. I think, too, another another thing I would say is like, don't get in, I would say, don't get in such a, uh, um, a self fulfilling thing right now, even though you definitely should be that you knock out the people that actually are showing up for you. Oh, you is that, that's my whole point. Yeah. We t- listen, we tend to, there's this weird thing when we sign on for these soul contracts, but, and, and again, back to the last new moon, because these all tie together every month, the last new moon, we were trying to figure out what started us. What, what was the event, not blaming the people, but in our childhood, what was the, our little storybook? Was it a storybook of abuse physically, emotionally? Was it abandonment? Was it rejection? You know, what were those trauma triggers then? Does it mean you have to go back and relive the pain all over again? But by looking at it to get a reset, a reboot, and disengage from it, you understand that you're not going to keep creating different people with the same relationship dynamic in right. business or in personal life that was... Pat, you know, parroting or mirroring because we absorb things from our little kids. That was the point of last month, the new moon. This whole lunar month was about try to look with fresh eyes at what your storybook was when you were a little one. Now that you are not just a, not just a little one, even though it still resides within you forever, now with the Leo energy coming and the maturity of cancer, the grandmother, cancer, the mother, we're supposed to mother ourselves and nurture ourselves and say, hey, I really dig the crap out of you. You're a really cool person in my life, but I'd like to just bring up da 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 And you think about it, take your time, but it's the one thing I'd like to see us work on a little bit because I think we could, like, I, I don't like that pestering me. It's pestering me. So tell me what I need to know to make that go away. See, I'll own it. Tell me, you know, that, you know, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. Don't put it all on the other person or something. Absolutely or, not. Yeah. Nor am I going to take it all on myself. That's the difference. And what I started to say is, but we tend to because of those things we absorb like little psychic sponges in our childhood. That when we're littles, it it was going on in our family dynamic. It was the unresolved stuff with the mom or the dad and and their fracturedness and their brokenness, like we talked about on July. 8th. You know, it's not that we're laying blame. We just need to look at the story. So we don't keep writing the same script. That's all. And disengagement that way. Now we've got the Leo. And so now with the Leo is happy with Mars and Aries and it's happy. Hell yeah. Yeah. With Chiron and Aries. The Leo's like, we got this, no problem. But you know what? You can't keep showing up to the same problem with the, just the same answers. I got some new stuff for you. Look, I got a pretty little box with a gold bow on it with stars shimmering on it. It's your gift. It's your box. You got to know that you deserve it. You got to know that you deserve not to settle for less. Yeah, because I'll tell you, hint- I, I, real. I'm sorry, but this is like my life story, Mary. If you feel like you don't deserve something, guess what? You're going to manifest. Right. It will. It will. It will come into your life and be like, oh, look at this big thing again uh, and again and, you and again can't until have it. When I'm going to give you one shift there, with what <laughs> came out of your subconscious? You know, when you said. You know, Mary, this is my life story. I'm but it's give you not. I'm not saying. I'm this not, was. It was. This yeah. Was. I already knew that this story. was going to happen. Like this new moon thing. Like I'm not. Like I know what. 
if we all know what we deserve. And if we don't know what we deserve, then we need to check ourselves for sure and be like, why, what I'm going through all, I've went through so much of this, man. I hate yeah, well, that I'm talking years, like this, but I have your chart. Yeah. Yep. Now let me just say this about everybody out there when Mars is in Aries. So protect your eyes, especially if you're working around sharp objects or volatile fluids. Um, just like we've seen the riots in these different cities, you know, with, with, when they were doing the riots over whatever banner they were proclaiming is the reason they were acting like temper tantrum spoiled brats of all ages. You know, they were busting into businesses and it was like glass yeah. and fire. So these are the, these are the shadow sides of when we get to the fire signs, especially Aries, because Aries got a little, kind of like a little seductive thing with fire anyway. Aries kind of likes fire. Nah. They kind of like firecrackers and they like fire. There's something about it turns them on. <laughs> that lights me up. Lights me up. I like that fire. I like that fire just a little too much. But so what, what happens is you want to make sure that it's a fire that's ceremonial and serves you well. So absolutely by the 22nd of July, fire is a great element. For us to work with the incense, the sage, the candles, the camper ceremonial fire. Yeah, it's wonderful, you know, and especially if it's a fire by the creek or a fire by the water, even better, you know, because you've got those shifting elements. We're going from water into fire. And after that, after Leo, we're going to go into earth. So we're going to be seeking out the trees and we're going to be seeking out mountains and crystals and land and painting rocks again. But with Aries, you want to make sure that you protect your eyes. You know, so all this medical stuff about wear a mask, the most volatile area you've got on your face is your eyes. So when I'm going into a store, and it's, it's especially easy to do in the summer, I keep my sunglasses on. I mean, I've, I've done my little frankincense oil and, you know, cleaned my glasses with them on the outside. And I'm walking in with frankincense oil because it's an all-natural, holy oil disinfectant. It's, I put a drop under my nostrils, a drop in the little ear canals, and, you know, I've got, if, if I mandated to wear a mask, it's on my bandana as I walk in the door, you know, on the outside. So anything that I'm breathing, I've still got the good oils that are taking care of and going into my respiratory system. Respite. Yeah. Your spirit within uh, your lungs, you know, your, right. your roots and your well, tree. I, I want to give a, just a little bit of advice that I've learned, too, when it comes, when you learn something like what Mary's talking about with... Um, with doing this stuff like what you you know you deserve to claim it and ask for it right but you also uh from a hermetic point of view and and then the laws of nature there's this thing called ebb and flow right so yep, if yep. you know what you deserve and ask for it then you're going to feel better emotionally and mentally and all of that stuff but you're going to feel even better if you yeah. give that back to a, a person or whatever in your life that you know is deserving of things too, claim what you deserve, like what you know you deserve, and what you desire, and what bothers you. But also, you know, give that show back up. Is to, that show up to the people or things in your life that are being that way for you? And when they have a problem, pay attention and listen and have compassion. And there's a nice little ebb and flow that goes there, and it'll, it's just you can exhale, and well, it also and you empowers you. To that point, where we have to stay cognizant. So we're not just into the inner child. It's when they're expressing, you know, when it's their turn, let's say, and they're expressing something that's a hardship they're going through, something that really got their goat, you know, the angst, you yeah. know, and all that. It's by us really doing deep listening. We're not thinking about, we're not doing things like this. Yeah, that irritates me too. Yeah, I remember a time in our head, you know, we're like, stop putting yourself at the forefront right. of everything. Really listen what's going on with him or her. Really visit their script, go into their script with them, walk with them and that, and what they're expressing with you instead of like, you know, that happened to me in 2009. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got divorced too. Don't do that. That's the automatic thing that we do. We keep taking it back to ourselves. And the person is looking at you like, really, I'm telling you an experience that happened to me. Didn't know you then you weren't involved. And people can tell when you're not really listening, they can tell yeah. when you're in your head or you've taken it back to your own, you know, the I show, and I'm saying capital I. So it's not all about you. If you're going to bother to engage in a convo, this is the time to true synchronicity of a spiritual, psychical, telepathic way is if you want to be a real energetic empath, is you shield yourself so you don't take on the pain or the frustration or the anger or the, or the shock or the illness of what they just went through that was very difficult in their life, the tsunami that hit them, mm -hmm. to be a true professional empath 
you're right there with them, but you're not getting drained. You've done your own psychical work and you've learned to do your shields and you're there, but you're, they're not able to be an energy thief of you. You're really there for them, but you're not getting drained. And what Joe's saying is when you really do that, you get an energy boost because you were actually truly present and by them venting, you know, by them venting the pain or the frustration or like, wow, that was a really wild thing to go through. You know, that car accident or that divorce or whatever, you know, yes, you can vicariously learn another perspective when you do deep listening because you didn't handle your divorce or that car accident you had wasn't exactly like them. You know, so it's, you get a different perspective and it keeps you out of that automatic pilot inner child stuff. It keeps you out of that. And that's a part of our own little narcissistic dance. Yeah, no. When the, I was a kid, right. yeah, like your song that when you I was played a child, at the beginning. Yeah. Yep. They'll suck you the into fire. it. They'll you'll suck yep. you into it, and then make you a part of it. And you might be doing that to others too, instead of just like just having some real compassion and empathy, and then without re- really, getting drained. But you know what? I, I I wrote this big long article on Patreon for the patrons about my the whole reason why I'm here doing this show. It was really personal. And I said in that article, Mary, I said, the one thing that I think that hurts the most is being misunderstood. Yep. And I, and I don't think like, and it really choked me up when I said it too, because I don't think, I don't think I mean like just verbally, I just mean from the heart, you know, we're expressing our deepest feelings and everything that we do, you know? Oh yeah. Well, that, that is the creativity of our soul. The heart chakra has more magnetic frequencies that come from it in the brain that's so, pretty, pretty good more for things. a scorpio mary you're, you're a very <laughs> mature scorpio i could tell you that very Thank like you're a wise you're the eagle for sure well see it hit me young when you've got five planets in scorpio it hits you young there's no escaping the lessons like when they were when the guides were out there going so gonna go back to earth huh you want to get it done quick yeah yeah here's Think all you can the do scorpio it? Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, make you, let, let's give you some cosmic Scorpio soup, and let's see. Let's throw Aquarius in there, too. Yeah, how about that? I can handle it. I can handle it. Here you go. <laughs> it's just like I remember just looking at learning my chart when I was 13 going, oh, my God. I've got so much. I'm, I'm just going to embrace it young. And it gave me – it was so scary and so potentially dark that I thought, okay, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to deal with this. I have to face it off and I have to deal with it. So with Aries, listen, now I don't, I know we all live in different regions, but I'm glad that one of the fear porn things they threw out there was the murder hornets. I'm glad that, but I'm telling you right now, don't let your dogs or your kids swim in a lot of these with these high temperatures that with a lot of people in Arizona, Florida, Tennessee here, there's a, there's a type of algae that gets on the mountain streams and the lakes and, and like a lot oh, of kids yeah. like to just go jumping in the lakes. There's a toxicity that causes immediate seizures and will kill your dog. And that, if what little kid doesn't like to go play in the water with their dog in nature? But it's like in, when you live in Florida, they tell you, don't eat shellfish with a month that doesn't have an R in it. You hear that when you live in Florida. All the fish Damn, really? tell you that. It's like, what? Oh, yeah. Don't eat shrimps. Don't eat crabs. None of the locals will be eating the shrimps or the crabs or the oysters. They just look at you like, there, there's a tourist. There's an idiot. None of the fishermen. We'll do that because it's like a breeding season and it's the weakest time for them. So they don't eat the lobsters and the shrimps and the crabs during that time in Florida. I don't know about Maine and all that up there. It's different kind of temperatures of the water. But here, when you're in the mountains, you got to watch. For there's a there's a and there's like a, an algae, the red tide that happens in Florida. That's that's dangerous, too. And, and they don't want the tourists to know about it. But, you know, when you've lived there 20 years. But when you get into the high temperatures that are higher than normal in mountains, like it's kind of normal out in the West and Arizona and, and those kind of places. But when you get in these lush mountains, there's a time of the year when there's a weird kind of lime green kind of thing that starts to get on the lake. And most people are innocent and they don't know that can cause their kids to have bad ear infections and it can kill your dog, kill your dogs in 20 minutes. So I just want to get that out there as a public information thing. And there's, there's a different kind of wasp and hornets, big difference. And the stingers, see Mars and the mm, Scorpio things would be one. the stingers, yeah, and the and the and the skeeters, you know, and things that'll just like bite you, you know, like sweat bees and stuff. So Aries can be that hornet kind of thing that'll get you too. And it's not yellow jacket season yet; that comes around every year in September, October. We know that when we live in these regions. You learn your bugs, 
where you live, but there's some odd hornets out there right now. Like I got nailed last week. I'm like, yeah, of course. It's, you know, and it's the black. They're black. They're not wasps. They're not skinny paperweights. They're, they're hornets, and they're black. So I just want to say to you a couple of holistic things. If you get hit by the biting spiders or the scorpions or the hornets or the wasps, get you some apple cider vinegar. I keep mine in the refrigerator, so it always feels good. Get you some apple cider vinegar and immediately wipe down those sting points with apple cider vinegar. Keep on hand the even solid at big box stores now. It's called activated charcoal. This is the time of year you want to have AC activated charcoal capsules in your, they're like four bucks. It's cheap. But if you get bit by the spider and they get stung, if you get snake bit and you've got that, you know, I ride with a few of them in my car. In case I'm out somewhere and you keep them in your house. This is the time of year I've got those close at hand for you or your animals. When you take charcoal, this is an old Indian remedy. You use your spit if you get hit by a snake and you're not sure if it's a viper or not, or you get bit by a spider and you don't know if it's a black widow or a brown recluse, which will start to cause entropy of the flesh. Get that charcoal capsule, open it up, use your spit, put it in the palm of your hand. That's your DNA. That's your immune system. And immediately mix your spit with that charcoal capsule, it'll be black. It's a black powder and put it right where that bite is and p- push it in. Push it in with your fingers and that spit and it's going to stick and it's going to be like that black. What it is, is it's like a drawing salve, but it's a powder. And activated charcoal pulls the spider or the snake venom out. It buys you time. And then you immediately take two charcoal capsules by mouth and swallow them. Because guess what they pump your stomach with when you go to the hospital in the emergency room? Guess what they pump your stomach with? Guess what they put in there? activated charcoal ask any nurse so you wow. want to have that four or five dollar bottle on hand for your cat your dog your kid your parents the neighbor anybody gets snake bit or whatever because it's viper season right now too yeah buddy yeah, I, yeah we got so to take want a to break that. right now cheap. um mary yeah, it's I'm cheap. sorry that's okay no but i just want everybody to write that down activated charcoal apple cider vinegar you put your vinegar on first so you stop the, the hurt, you know, the hurt of it. It'll stop it from whelping up. But you want that charcoal, and then don't wipe it down with anything once you put that charcoal on it. But understand this, and then you can go to break. If you're on medication, you can't take activated charcoal. It'll pull the medications right out of your body. So you got to take it away from when you take your medication. Okay. Thanks for that. We'll be right back. We'll open up the phone lines, 1-800-588-0335. And get your reading with Mary. Cosmic Conditions tonight, live here on the Fringe FM. I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. We'll be right back. from metaphorical archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, Who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions. The circuit that that was recorded on is gone. The energy flows freely and you're free of it. And that's what emotional freedom is all about. We offer this as a pro bono service, but this is something that I offer because no one, it seems, is helping people with these experiences. If you'd like to reach me, it's really easy. My cell phone is 214-995-3754. Please leave a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Or you can email me, Barb dot eft at gmail.com and eft stands for emotional freedom techniques reach out to me it's confidential this works you won't believe the results all right man this is crow triple seven and you are listening to the fringe fm 
Right, me old chiners. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't, Adam and Eve, how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology and spirituality to name but a few. They got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish You Just Finished Reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell... This portion of the show is being brought to you by Calvin Vander Jordash, the internationally famous fashion designer who is proud to introduce his latest and most magnificent creation, Corduroy Pantyhose. From the cave in the depths of your mind, it's Light in the Void with Joe Root. Hey, this is country music singer and void walker Jason Benoit. And when I need my fix on the world of magic and the capabilities of the human consciousness, I listen to Joe Roop right here on Lighting the Void Radio. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or a live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man, Joe Root, and his show, Lighting the Void. Pair Abnormal News, I'm Brad Bernards. July is a big month for missions to Mars. Three new spacecraft from NASA, China, and the United Arab Emirates are due to lift off on their journey to the Red Planet, according to reporting from Australia's ABC News. NASA's Mars 2020 mission plans to put a new rover on the Red Planet called Perseverance. An ancient lake is a fantastic place to pursue our goal of looking for possible Martian life. On Earth, lakes are filled with living creatures. Evidence of that life is often preserved in the mud and sand deposited on the bottom of the lake. So, we use the rover's instruments to explore the rocks of the ancient lake bed. Perseverance is the first rover ever tasked with finding evidence of past life on Mars, said Abigail Allwood, an Australian geologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who's in charge of Pixel, one of the seven instruments on board the rover. NASA has unveiled new policies to protect the Moon and Mars and Earth from contamination as human spaceflight advances, according to Space.com. The agency released two NASA interim directives July 9th that detail new requirements for human and robotic missions traveling to and from the Moon and Mars. These directives were enacted to protect the planetary bodies from any possible biological contamination that could originate on Earth and ultimately interfere with scientific research. Planetary protection is about the concern for biological contamination of celestial bodies, planets like the Earth and Mars, and and other bodies like the Moon and asteroids. Craig Kundrat, PhD, Director of Space, Life, and Physical Science Research and Applications Division. Connect with the news at parabnormalradio.com. I'm Brad Bernards, Parabnormal News. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Ed's Fake Imitation Butter. Yes, Ed's Fake Imitation Butter may look, feel, taste, and smell just like margarine, but believe it or not, it's actually real butter. At last, you can get the margarine flavor you love while still paying as much as you do for the high price spread. Try some of Ed's Fake Imitation Butter today. Your taste buds won't believe their eyes. Mr. Walton, did you make contact with Ellie? Were you taken to another planet, to a mothership? 
and how they communicate with them. Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right, welcome back to the second hour here on Lighting the Void. We're live on the Fringe FM, KTLK Digital Broadcasting. It's Cosmic Conditions with Mary Ducina, and that is when you call in and get a free reading, possibly a life-changing reading at 1-800-588-0335. Make sure you visit our website at maryducina.com, and all of that is going to change your day. It's going to change your life. One session. You might get it tonight if you make it through. If you don't make it through, for the love of God, don't call the radio station. Like, people are calling, well, I mean, I guess call the radio station, but people are calling the uh, the other number again. That's the confusing thing. Uh, you just got to keep calling until you get through. And when somebody picks up and when they hang up, try again. I, I got to set it up. I know it's probably confusing, but it's all right. Uh, I got to set it up to where it's just like try again or it gives you a busy signal. I think it just keeps ringing or whatever when they don't get through. All right. So, Mary, Joe, honey, uh, you, Joe, honey, you've got to announce the number you want them to call. Yeah, well, I did. one eight hundred five eight eight zero three three five. I say it so much. I say it in my sleep. <laughs> Put it in your phone. <laughs> All right. So, don't trigger his Aries. Stuff. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, uh. I'm getting tired of saying the same things over and over again. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right. So here we go. We're going to take your phone calls. Thank you for the, the discussion about the cancer energy and the Aries energy, balancing them out. Yep. Just recapping. Say what you want me and say what you want. Also be compassionate. Be a good listener. Stop hurting yourself and set your boundaries. That's pretty, pretty good, right? So well, that's, that was fantastic. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. You ready? Say what you mean. Do what you say. Are you ready? Here we go. Yeah, I'm ready. 701 area code. You're on the air with Mary Decina. Who are you speaking with? Good evening, Joe and Mary. It's Danielle from North Dakota. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Doing pretty good. I hope you guys are doing well. Fantastic. Nice thank, you. fantastic. thank you for including us in that, Danielle. How nice. Thank you for saying you're hoping that we do well. See, she paid attention. <laughs> Not just about Danielle. She immediately brought us in for some nice energy. I'll take it. Thank you. Back at you. So I got a vibe All for right. you, Danielle. 
I got a vibe for you. Good. I keep feeling like there's an unfinished symphony, and that there's been. I keep seeing like like you know how when people write sheet music, there's like the little notes and everything, but in yours it's saying why 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 why. So it's like I keep feeling <laughs> like between August and October of this year. The why, 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 why is going to be, oh, yeah, okay, I got it, I'm going. So I feel like that something that you've been part and parcel to a lot of the information and you've been kind of steering your course and, and you know, staying in tune and, okay, I'll adjust that and I'll do that, but I feel like there's been some kind of missing data, missing components, or there's something that needs to be writ- rewritten into that sheet music kind of a thing. Does that make sense to you? Danielle, do we have you back? Yeah, okay. We do. That's twice. That's twice. I got disconnected while I was on hold. Hey, let me let me t- tell you something too. really cool. As soon as your yeah. call dropped, another person called in. Then they dropped, and then you came back in. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> Mary, well, I think the universe is probably working in my favor this evening. So, so at, what, what, after the why why in October. What, can you wrap that up for the real quick again, Mary? Sorry about that. Yes, I feel like that there's been some, she may not, you may not even know this, Danielle, but I feel like there's some data or some truth or some pieces of some components or pieces that need to come in. Some information needs to come in. It's Sometimes it's just not time yet for the universe to right. give us that component. And when it comes in, you're like, oh my God, that's it. But bam. And you have that aha moment. And you have your epiphany, and I see that for you. It's like the the biggest part of your journey on the struggle to figure out why, what, when, and where is over, and now you're coming to that high view. You're coming to that apex point of being able to go, I got it. I did it. Cool. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's I strong. I'm glad to you. hear that. Yeah, it's very yeah. strong, but it's not been easy. I'll be, the, I'll be the first to validate that with you. And you know what? I applaud your strength because you – have got stick with itness. Yeah, stick with kind of have to. <laughs> well, I not everybody kids. does. I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I applaud you. I really do because I feel like that you've just you managed to get your groove on, and the success is right in front of you. So I know it's been bizarre, not just hard, bizarre. But you've like oh, yeah. kept all Absolutely. the like a juggler. You've kept all the balls in motion. It's like here, here's your lunch. Do this, do this, do this, and I got to pay that. Blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> then I feel like it's just it's it's time for you. And I, somehow between August and the beginning of October, I really like how the how the song plays back to you. Let's put it that way. So you're a composer in a sense. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Daniel, much. Daniel, where are you calling from? Validation. North Dakota. North Dakota. That's right. You said that. See. Yeah. You got to be a good listener. Yeah. Sorry Deep about that. listening. <laughs> Thanks. That's okay. Thanks for your call, Danielle. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, you guys. Have a great night. Thank you Bye. for being with us. Now's the time. Now's when you call in. Now, now, now. See? <laughs> All right. Uh, 541 area code. You're on the air with Mary Decina. Who are we speaking with? Hi. My name is Caitlin. How are you guys tonight? Good, Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Oh. Um, would you like a card picked or do you have a question? Oh, good. You know, Mary, I, I've been listening to you on the show for quite some time, and I really admire both of you for what you guys do. And I, I really, I'm really into astrology. I'm kind of just getting into all of this stuff and just how it applies to me. And I, I love your work, Mary. And just to Thank be you. honest, just your boldness in general. I really appreciate <laughs> that. I think that it's really refreshing and just so needed right now. And so I kind of just wanted you to just turn that on me. And I just wanted to, to kind of get a sense. You want some boldness? You want some mystic boldness? I do. I do. You're I want smart some truth, girl. lady. <laughs> You're a smart girl. You're a smart well, I girl. It. Because boldness is a boldness is the kind of light that's like a laser. And what it'll do is it'll laser through the shadows and it cuts that path right through the forest so you can't get lost because look, there it is, just follow the light. Okay. So I feel there's something I see a rainbow coming out of the heart chakra, there's a door. And and we're opening, when the sun goes into Leo, we open what's known by a lot of mystics as the lion's gate, the lion's portal. Because remember, the sun, the star, our great star in our Milky Way galaxy, loves, loves, loves it some Leo. So Leo rules the heart, and most people forget that that heart chakra has a back door. 
in our mid spine there, just our little angel wings, you know, those shoulder blades. That's the that's the residue of our mm-hmm. angel wings. That's like the base of those angel wings. So I see that lit up for you, like that heart chakra has got a rainbow coming out, but instead of like connecting up or down to another chakra, your rainbow chakra is the door is opening to your heart and it's coming right out there. And I feel like that mm-hmm. it's like a searchlight, you know, it's like kind of like um when a helicopter's going over a city or a neighborhood and it's got that searchlight on the helicopter. So it's a big light. So <laughs> rainbow is, is one of your main nature symbols, one of your main omens to where you go, Oh, look at there, there's a rainbow. Mm-hmm. That was in my reading. And I feel like it's the the earth mother awakening in you. And I feel like you said you're you're really just getting into some of the mystical stuff and the astrology stuff. And I feel like that your consciousness mm-hmm. is undergoing a shape shifting and a changing. Your awareness is already being amped up. You know, it's like uh, you're you're okay with nurturing yourself. You're okay to receive the guidance. You're learning how to stay out of your own way in that process. Mm-hmm. But I see your ESP is strengthening. That's what I, even though you may be studying mm-hmm. astrology and, and different things, and I, I keep feeling like they said, tell her to wear So whether you get that as your bath towel or... Tell her to wear what? Favorite, you cut out right purple. there for a second. Purple, okay. Purple. Yeah. Purple, violet, purple, purple, and the deeper tone. Mm, okay. Right on. And so and this is actually, this is kind of perfect because I've been having some really intense dreams lately too. And I, I'm i really into plants and herbalism. And so I sure. had Queen Anne's Lace actually come to me in a dream last night. And, you know, making like a flower essence. And there's all this crazy symbolism. And one thing that Queen Anne's Lace and the flower remedy or essence represents is you know, like psychic attunement is at least what I found. And I found that really interesting because that's something that I really want to work on. And I love, you know, I love that you're getting in the flower you know, essence. I love that. But yeah. let me let me give you one little countryism about Queen Anne's Lace. Do you already know sure. that sugars love Queen Anne's Lace more than anything else? That what does? I'm sorry? Sugars. Queen Anne's Lace, chiggers. Do you know what chiggers are? There's those little kind of invisible little bugs, bugs that like yeah, that can get underneath your skin. Research that. Just look up chiggers, yes. So don't just go grabbing Queen Anne's okay. Lace without, like, having a bucket of water and dipping that bucket of water with just a little bit of uh, white vinegar or something in it. You know, yeah, because the chiggers, mm-hmm. you can't see them with your, like, like it's like kind of like um, what they call in Florida, sand please. They're fleas, I mean, but you can't see them. Do they get those, so, uh, what you're calling from, what, the Pacific Northwest, do they get those up there? Yeah. Or is that just in warm oh, man, areas? I so I'm sure that they, they grow everywhere because it, it's definitely well, no, when it's not the flowers. I'm talking about the, the bug. I thought that was oh, just in like a the bug. southern stuff. I hope yeah. I hope that, I don't know. I've not been to that area, but I'm telling you that's that I know. You know, it gets cold in the mountains too here in the Smoky Mountains. I'm just telling mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Well, Queen Anne's lace blooms in the warmer months anyway, spring and summer. But I would, and it's beautiful. And I used to love it when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'd start itching. And then they'd say things like, oh, you got to get clear fingernail polish and put it on the red spots. You know, you got to suffocate the chiggers or if you don't go to the doctor and all that. So just C-H-I-C-G-E-R-S. Mm-hmm. Just look up, type in Queen Anne's Lace Flower and Chiggers. Just type that in. You'll find out everything you need <laughs> to know. All right. I don't want I you will. to get chiggers. I don't. Want, I was a land surveyor for a while in Florida and. I got them. I didn't even, you know, I, and I'd heard about them, but I'd never had them. Oh. It's like, oh my God. So yeah, you don't need that. And again, I don't know <laughs> if you heard it, but when something like that happens, like go out and put lemongrass or apple cider vinegar on you before you go out doing your herbs and your flowers, because a lot of times bugs will leave you alone with that. Thank you for your call, yeah. Caitlin. Thank you. Thanks, sweetie. Thank you guys. Just keep, keep being amazing. I really appreciate you both. You take good care. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Higgers. Oh, yeah. Somebody calls in about a psychic reading. It's the first time I heard you tell them, watch out for chiggers. Watch well, out. Well, I'm telling for you. Chig- that's he, uh, such a redneck problem, I thought, but it's really not, is it? Be- oh, you didn't, not, let me tell you guys a redneck solution to chiggers. Lacquer okay. thinner. That'll suffocate them. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know if you should put that on your skin, but it works for me. <laughs> I just, I don't think so. <laughs> <clears throat> um, All right. Where are we at here? Four. Th- Three five area code. You're on the air with Mary Ducina. Who are we speaking with? That's you. Well, it sounds like they're pulling toilet paper down the uh, toilet paper roll. All right, let's go to uh, 
six two zero area code. You're on the air with Mary Decina. Who are we speaking with? Hello. Hi, Mary. Hi, Joe. This is Ashley from Southeast Kansas. How are Hi, you? Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Good. Thank you, dear. Boy, you're such a resilient caller. I just love that about you. Just that determined girl, buddy. Talk about dedication and discipline. Ashley wins the prize. <laughs> it's always a great way to start out the new moon. Start out the month. Quite. Anyway, you're a smart girl. So, do you have an update for Joe and I, or do you just want a card? Um, well, um, a lot has happened. Um, I'm having to uproot out of the house that I just got comfortable in. And so I'm looking for places in Arkansas. And so I kind of just, uh, I wanted to, you to pull a card for me for some guidance and just to be grounded, I guess, through all this, because it's been pretty rocky. Yeah, I got the mirror, and, and I'm working with three decks now. I got the mirror, and it's a beautiful female with like a garland, like instead of a crown, it's a garland of flowers like you'll often see at Beltane or when they do the flower dances, the ceremonial flower dances. And she's, there's a forest with a golden mirror. Here comes Leo colors, golds and purples. Um, she's in the mirror, and she's holding a bouquet of like the stargazer lilies, She's got her magic wand as a walking stick, and she's very serene in the mirror. So mirrors are always about new portals, new experiences, vision quest, like looking in the mirror. I'm going to see first within me which way I am to go. And the card next to that is called simply, you'll love it, Blessed. And it's a flower fairy in mm-hmm. lavender in one of those spiral shells, like those nautilus shells. That's like her the way she's traveling in the skies like the sky is like how it looks at twilight with lavenders and she's this flower fairy it's got whitish blonde hair the other gal's brunette and she's floating in this nautilus up in the sky so it's and it's blessed so i feel like that you were on a cleansing uh path over the last two years since 2018 and i feel like that something you had to do that was karmic and you had to deal with a lot of frustration and personal sadness and to build back your own confidence and the vortex that you were in did that, did all of that. And you've shed the skin. It's like snake medicine in your animal medicine. You now have, you're the fresh, you're the fresh, new, shiny skin. You've shed a lot of uh, that where you were and what you were doing was necessary in order to get you through the purge. You've like, you've been purged and, or like baptized Mm -hmm. or like resurrected. And now you're rising up like a Phoenix like you've, you're moving from the snake totem because you've now shed the skin and you're like rising up like this flower fairy, but more like a like a phoenix. Like you've risen up and the old versions of you that you've decided did not serve your higher interest, you've now shed. Yeah, that, that really resonates because um, on the 10th, I turned 30 and, you know, most people kind of dread turning 30. And for me, it was like this whole new beginning, like this is, you know, a whole new decade that I feel like I'm finally in full control over, Yep. you know? Well, even astrologically, Ashley, when we get to that 29th to 30th year of this walkabout, that's for our first Saturn return astrologically. So it gives you, Saturn isn't just about fears and loss and restrictions in our life. It gives us the chutzpah. It gives us the resilience and the ability to go, I'm going to climb that mountain. I'm not staying at the base of this mountain and I'm not staying on the craggy edge like the fool and the terror. I'm going to climb this mountain and I'm going to have me a panoramic view and it's going to happen and I'm going to feel good that I did the exercise and I climbed the mountain and I'm good with me. That's what Saturn can gift you. I heard an astrologer when I was in my early teens say to me, no matter what Saturn cycle you go through, Saturn, whether it's a square or conjunction, Saturn return, whatever, he said, Saturn never brings a trial or a test into our life and our chart without giving you a big reward on the back side of it. So like when Saturn's going through, you know, zero to 30 degrees, and man, is that true. When Saturn rewards you, it's the person, it's the job, it's the loyalty, it's, it's, the, it's the stuff that, it's the people and the stuff that we were talking about in the first hour. It's the reliable, authentic, real people and places and things and, and the clients you love because they're willing to do the work. They don't expect you 
to give them the answer. They want you to do all the work for them. It's like, well, I've got money. Just tell me what to do. No, <laughs> you have to do this. Yeah. And, and quit calling me on my yeah. off hour and aggravating me, trying to get something for free. Quit it. So, you know, it's like we show up and we do these authentic things. Then you've got those people that want to, like, cozy up to you and act like that you're, you, you know, oh, hey, I'm your new best friend. Hey, I got a question to ask you. No. Mm-hmm. So I don't tell anybody here what I do in this city. I, I let one one friend told somebody at a restaurant here, right? So the next time I went, the waitress sits down and she puts her palm out in front of me. I just oh, there, you talk about eye roll. She goes, oh, tell me something about my life. And I said, you're going to give me a whole free meal today just because you work here? I mean, I'm entitled to that, right? You're just going to give me something for free because I walked in here today. And she goes, oh, you know, I can't do that. And I said, so why should I give you a free reading? Snap out of it. So but people just think, <laughs> because, they just think that you should do that. So, I mean, I show up once a month or more sometimes with Joe, and we do this, and everybody's so wonderful and so appreciative. But when it starts being in your social circle or your friend life, oh, you'll have those people that try to cozy up to you going, well, yeah, I bought you, and to tell me something free. No, it's not going to happen. Did you do do the ritual or or the visualization exercise that we talked to you about before? Yeah. Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah, so, I know what you, you, I, go ahead. So do like do that. Yeah, that with the emotions and all that. Mhm. Yeah, and I, I've had a lot of release from that and things that I've been like holding on to that I didn't realize I was holding on to. It was like go. I felt it, it, and I let the universe have it. Yeah. And sometimes it's okay, it's okay to have a good cry. I, you know, it's okay to cry. It's okay to let the uh, waterfall is the symbol I keep seeing for this new moon. You know, we have waterfalls that come out of when we work out real hard, we have sweat waterfalls. When we, you know, we take a shower, we have another waterfall. But when we cry, I had a doctor tell me, I never had heard this before, but I had a, an internist tell me, you know, we release more toxins in our tears, in our actual little salty tears than any other way in our body. And I'm like, Include, including pee pee? He said, yeah, you release more viable toxins when you cry that are good for you to release your body because it's closer to the brain. I'm like, that's just cool. So you can have tears of joy, tears wow. of laughter, the ones we prefer, right? You know, but, but, oh, but don't hold it back mm-hmm. when you're, when you're hearing a story that we're talking about deep listening or you're telling something and your eye just, you just, eyes just want to cry. Just let that happen. It's one of the, one of the lesser known, beautiful ways of your body healing. Just it's let a, it happen. It's also your magic power too. People that yeah, shut off their yeah. emotions that don't let them flow. You know, there's a book called by Mitch Horowitz called The Miracle Club. And there's a lot of people like Joe Dispenza and others understanding the power of sinking the emotion with the mind, right? So mm-hmm. when you have a cry, even if you're in despair, you can use that and and visualize what you really want and give it to the universe at that moment, you know, instead of mm-hmm. uh, holding on to it or holding on to the past or and wishing things were a certain way and all this other stuff like just just let when the stuff pours out just use that and visualize what you want because i'm at i as a man i cry all the time like I, not all the time but i'd cry when i'm hurt i cry like i not i don't know it's, i wish people really knew people really don't know but you can use that to your advantage like study I like love Joe to laugh Spencer. so hard I cry. I love that. Yeah, I mean, that's my favorite thing. You know how rare that too. can be. <laughs> I yeah, love that's that. It's just amazing. like you talk about. I mean, that puts you into shaking medicine, and you know, you try like it. Sometimes it, it happened to me when I was a kid in church. You know, in, in Tennessee, they have these like these country women that would get up and did these solos, and my relatives made me sit up front as a kid because I was kind of like a wild nature tomboy, and they figured we make Mary sit up front. She'll have to behave because she didn't want to be pinched because I had an aunt that knew how to pinch. And I was right on the front row, and I loved the preacher, but here came this woman, and she could not sing. Well, But I liked it because she was really putting her heart into the song, but all of a sudden it struck my funny bone that she was, that she was like twisting her face a certain way. Like I used to laugh when people would fall, including myself because it was the face that they made when they were going down, like those all those distorted faces. And it would just absolutely take me into like yeah. crumple on the ground laughing and crying. And, I, and I, again, I would laugh at myself. You know, but talk about like the inner child thing. I can still see that woman looking down at me. like, And I was quietly laughing because I knew 
that I was up front and they could see my shoulders shake. I knew I was going to get pinched. So there was no way that I did any noise or anything. That was hard. That was hard to do. But, I mean, yeah, I got the pinch. I got the pinch, and I said, don't set me on the front <laughs> row anymore because I can't deal with them soloists. I can't deal with that. Their face is too weird. I can't do it. <laughs> so let yourself – let it flow. I mean, that's a part of letting it flow. And like Joe was saying, when you do that visualization ritual, what is that all relating to? The eyes. Where do the tears come from? The eyes. And a lot of times when we cry, whether we're laughing or we're in despair, as Joe said, automatically our nose will run. Sometimes when we cry, all of a sudden, like the yeah. clear liquid – like nose tears happen. It's not like you're sick and you got a cold or allergies. It's like all of a sudden it runs along with it. And I'm like, that's interesting. So again, it's the flow of the of the body's waters that are saying, oh good, let me release it. Let me let me just release this in thought, in heart, in deed, in emotion, and let me just let, let me give you the actual. You know, the skeptics out there, I don't believe any of that unless I can taste it, touch it, or feel it. Well, you know what? Your eyes are leaking, and so is your nose. So there's your sign. Yeah, talk mm-hmm. about bold. I'll give you bold. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your call, Ashley. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. Have a good night. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. She's Thank so you. loyal. I love her loyalty. All right, let's try this one again. Uh, 435 area code. You're on the air. Who are we speaking with? Mandy. Hi, Mandy. How are you doing? Oh, wow. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> you made it. Hi. She's like, yeah, I did hi. it. <laughs> months, months, yes. Awesome. Oh, you've been trying for months? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I listen to you guys every day at work. Wishing, dang, why didn't I call last night? Oh, I'll try again. Couldn't get through. It's a bit. But I did tonight. <laughs> Good for you. Do you have a question or do you want me to pull a card? Pull a card for me, please. Okay, the, thank you. The first thing I see with you is, you know how there's a difference in how the sky breaks it's right, right before sunset versus when it's twilight right before dark? I see like new dawnings with you, and I'm seeing dolphins jumping out of the ocean like that. That's a, a lucky sign for you. I don't care if you're in Red Rocks area or up north. There's something about the dolphin that wants to be your like spirit animal right now, and dolphins have a very telepathic and and sound that they work a lot with sound healing so there may be something to do with you know when you play those different frequencies like 526 does this and 420 436 does this like learn about and that's been scientifically validated now for people who need that but the higher frequencies and you can find them on the internet you can find them on youtube but just listen to some of those just type in healing frequency music because it's, it's, I know, I think it's whales that have the sonar and dolphins have yeah, a different name for what they have. Yeah. But it's very yeah, I strong. My mom you. has something like that. Wow, that's weird because I just looked up to make a dolphin pendant today. <laughs> well, there's your sign. There, there you, you go. go. And wow, dolphin is yeah, also well, tied in with it. Pisces. It's tied in with Pisces because you, when you think about the water signs, Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio, I like to always do a little teaching each month so it stays fresh. Okay, so Pisces and Cancer are oceanic. Scorpio is uh-huh. a different kind of water. You know, that, that'll be like, they can be like in cave water, so they can be under woods with dampness and all. But Cancer and Scorpio, the oceanic crab and the dolphins, those are definitely Poseidon, Neptune. Those are by the, the salt water, the womb waters of our Mother Earth. So you, that, that should be nice that it validates for you your own intuitive psyche, there's a confirmation for you that you were making or, or going to possess one way or another this dolphin pendant. So, yeah, put that on because I feel like that makes you a dolphin caller. So you're actually summoning or calling and allowing and receiving. And dolphin has a lot to do with pure friendships. Like, like wow, that's not my earthly brother or my earthly sister, but I have an otherworldly companionship this this person would be like who i would pick as a brother or a child or a parent so that there's something about a um a grace a canopy of grace or a supernatural affinity that's going to be coming into the people that you're linking up with over the next three months wow interesting thank yeah. you Ma- make you're some welcome notes. thank you thanks for calling mandy hopefully i get in in the next that's right. Three months, I can let you know. 
Right okay. Yeah, yeah. please update us. Joe and I love the updates, and if you find it's working out for you, then you can always get a longer reading than just a phone call. You know, you can save money, and you can get a reading and have a good time. Get a real long reading. That's the, what you yeah. want. That's the ones you want to get. Have, you, thank you for your call. You have a good night. All right, so it looks like 916 area code. You're on the air with Mary Ducina. Who are you speaking with? Hi, this is Amber from Hello. Sacramento. Hello, Amber How from are you Sacramento. Guys tonight? Fantastic. We're good. Listen to that uplifted good. voice. I love that. Oh, thank you. So I've, I've called in before. I'm a fan of your show, and I love this Monday or this moon, new moon energy readings. And I was just wondering, I looked at my chart today, and I have like a, um, what is it, a sun, lunar, I want to turn your radio down. I have a, just a little oh, bit. I'm sorry. Just a I little. have a funky part in my, in my chart, a lunar, sun, lunar return or something like that, and it's on today. So okay. I was wondering what that was all about. Okay, so am I understanding you correctly without getting too technical that this new moon at 28 degrees is actually highlighting the degrees of your birth, your natal sun and moon? I believe so, yes. Yeah, because that's what a return is, that it's coming back. You know, like there's a big difference between a 15, when it's a return, it's coming like each month because the moon changes signs every two and a half days, okay? So each Mm -hmm. month, all of us have a lunar return, all of us, okay? But... If the new moon actually hits at 28 degrees and your sun sign or moon sign is exactly at that, you know, within two degrees, 26 to 29 to 30 degrees of cancer, then that means the new moon, the sun and the moon are double t- tag teaming and putting in a, the, both the inner light and the outer light of the sun's luminations and the moon's reflections. So it's a highly psychic time. You definitely want to be working with uh, your dreams, your dream symbols. I know that Joe is one of the go-to people to learn about your lucid dreaming, your dream symbols, the interpretations of that. He has like a thing on Patreon to do with astral. This is a very strong 31-day cycle. If what you're saying is correct, I'm not doing your chart and looking at it right now. That's what I do for a living. So if that's what you're saying is correct, so I have to go by your information, then this is the most powerful time of 2020 for you to get some very potent intuitive psychic dream Im- images you can actually have that lucid dream where you're meeting up with your guides your angels people that are in the spirit world always always shield yourself and you, know, you can set your intention before you actually fall asleep at night have a notepad by your side ask your guides and your sacred guardian angel to bring back you know some some things that will help you further get your answers quicker type of a thing. Not that we should be impatient, but maybe I should say richer, that you ask for some real rich resolutions and solutions type of a thing. If if you ask and you get the feeling, like Joe was saying, that you deserve the answers, that you deserve to be unlocked and be on you somehow emotionally or some quagmire that you're in, with someone that is a person that means something to you on the job or in your family or in a relationship, we should do that. We should take that into our dreams. It's a great, it's a great project to do before the next show on August 18th. People like try to get, take a question into your dreams and say, I allow myself and I deserve to receive that answer. You could try to, because new moon specifically rule two week periods. So between now and August 3rd, our full moon in Aquarius is a perfect time the sun and dreaming is strongest when it's moving through cancer. So this is the most powerful time of the year to do that. Not that it couldn't work at other times of the year, right? But this is that new moon at that 28 degrees. And if it's impacting your chart, like you're saying, it's a type of psychic serendipity. It's like it's, it's, you could really get some, the tides in, you know, speaking of cancer, the ocean tides, the tide is in for you to get some very personal, powerful answers that you didn't have to go to the, reader or the astrologer for it can literally just come in with the next high tide for you so okay. indulge indulge yourself into it but respect your guides take like maybe sometimes you can take a little three mgs of melatonin melatonin um you can buy it over the counter at the store it resets the pineal gland it's a master hormone regulator 
So you take melatonin only in the dark at night because mm-hmm. it has a lot to do with setting your uh, circadian rhythms. So you take like take a low dose. Don't go buy a 10 mg of melatonin. It makes you have weird dreams. Go get like a 3 mg. That's a mid range, and just take it right when you're going to sleep. It takes you deeper into the symbology of dreams because it opens up the pineal gland. It kind of stimulates that DMT, the natural DMT. And so, but have that notepad mm-hmm. right by your bed and a pencil or a pen that writes really easy. And mm-hmm. don't try to write the whole dream down. If you see a phoenix walking through your dreams or a peacock flying in the sky, just write peacock in the sky and then get up and go piddle and go right back into your dream because that one thing will bring back the whole dream the next day. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good advice. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your call, thank you. Let Kayla. us know. I well, will. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Well, and melatonin's great to stimulate dream work. It's great. Yeah, I need to take some of that too. Oh, actually. yeah, it's nice. For it's sure. Nice. Yeah. Looks yeah. like, uh, who we got here? Washington. Oh, no, no, no. Let me make sure I'm doing this in order. Okay, line four, Washington State. Washington State 360. Who are you speaking with? Aloha, Joe and Mary. This is Yvonne calling. Hey, Yvonne. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Cancer Crab Thank Queen. you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I remember. I, I turned 72 on July 1st. But I'm a, oh, I'm a Cancer with a Leo rising. And all this Perfect. moon stuff and activity has created, like, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. But I was able to touch a very deep wound. And begin nice. the heal and start and the healing process of it. I had put it off for like over thirty years. I mean that's how deep the wound was. But I was finally able to touch it and start beginning work on it. Oh, congratulations! Oh my God, that's so. And look at that. Look how long that that traveled with you. I'm not saying it didn't have purpose. Again, I tell people look back without judgment. And how wonderful is it that you look back and go, I spent. 30 years knowing that that was walking along beside me, knowing that there was an energy frequency that was within me, what, even if it was unconscious for 30 years, and how wonderful of a birthday present this year, i finally been able to address it and start the releasing process. That's huge. All that, like on the phone, when your phone gets too full or the laptop gets too full, all of that yeah. logged up data is now over to the recycle bin, and you're going to be able to hit delete and empty the basket. Yeah, and and the hurt was in terms of the treatment. There was a sense of such a disregard, you know. Well, there was such a disregard, you know, in the way yeah. I was treated, and and that hurt, you know, in terms of, of people who I had, you know, had a close relationship with, but I was treated with such disregard. But now I can understand they weren't ready to handle it. They were. That's I right. put them in a panic. How did you, you know what did I you, mean? Like, I know you heard us talking about tears. Were you able to like feel the tears flow out of the eyes or the nose, or did you find that it? Was oh, more I'm like a, a Cancerian. I'm a Cancerian. I love to sob. I mean, I, I love to cry. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean the <laughs> sobbing kind. You know what I mean, Yvonne? No, I I've love your, to cry. I've got your next. I've got your next shingle for you being. You know, you, t- you always say that you're a psychopomp, but here's what you can say: I do sob therapy. Right on. I know how to help you. Well, you know, I realize things are coming together exactly what I'm about. I work with people's, uh, you know, people have, you know, suspected that I'm a healer. And then I realize, yeah, but I don't heal people physically. I I work with their emotional body. That's perfect for a cancer. Exactly. Listen, that's where people hide it. They can yakety yak all day long or they can... They can rephrase it in their mind and go to therapy. I love therapy. I love psychology. But that's still in the mental thought yeah. realm. But when you get to the no, emotion. mental, you know, you got to go really deep. And I found yep. that that's where now I understand, like, when I'm working with people just to touch them, you know, they immediately go into this emotional catharsis in front of me, you know. And, that's a gift. Um, and then I, it just it's coming together for me. I'm a psychopomp. I work with people's emotional body, even though I'm an RN, you know, but I got a good, strong background in the pathophysiology stuff. But I found as a nurse that I found that the basis of where disease starts is within the emotional body. Absolutely. Not in the Absolutely. physical. Physical is the last. 
You'll yeah. appreciate this. And You'll so appreciate this. Like, oh, now I know what the wolf are doing. We you gotta, know what I mean? We got to keep. The, we got to. We're starting to come down to time here. What do you? What's this final thought you want to well, give? I feel, well, I feel. So anyway, I feel like that. I feel like Yvonne that you've hit the sky. The soul fire in you. You've hit the sky fire and the soul fire and the fact that we're going into Leo, your rising sun. I just want to say to you that now that you understand what you're doing with emotional frequencies feel it to heal it type of a thing. Now you can actually have different kind of light that's streaming out of the chakras in your fingers and the chakras in the palms of your hands. And it's kind of like when we work with Reiki, but it's going to be a different kind. It's a higher vibration. Fantastic. Yes. So I'm becoming more comfortable in terms of the clarity of my shamanic work with people. Absolutely. That's a good, that's you know, fantastic. Because, you know, because I can take them to places. I can take them, like if mm. they're suffering physically that because they're dying, I can take them and give them a break from their body. That's oh, Thank, that's that, that's a, that's an art form that's rare in today's world. Thank you for your call, Yvonne. It was good to hear from you again. Happy glad, birthday. Glad you're having healing and healing other people. That's fantastic. You have a good night. All right, especially let's in see. World. Yeah, yeah, especially in today's world. Uh, do, 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 five, eight, six, area code. You're on the air with Mary Ducina. Who are you speaking with? My name is James. Hi, James. Hi. I'm also um, Salcedo Media on the chat room. Oh, cool. Just joined. I just started yeah. noticing you in there. Thanks for uh, joining the chat. Oh, thank do you, you have for a having question, me, James. Or do you, would you like me just to pull a card? Um, a card would be good. I, I, it takes too long to go into everything, so. Right on. Okay. A card might mm-hmm. say. I it. feel like um, I w- I want to go back to spring of this year, and I want to go to to for me when the wheel starts. I want to go to the spring equinox. I want to go. There's something lighting up around that. I keep seeing the lighting up between like the twentieth. And the 25th of March, 20th, 25th of March. And I feel like that my spirit guides are telling me that there was a, a new turn. There was a new uh, revolutionary turn of a higher aspect of your own soul's wisdoms and new interests in a different kind of course of study or education. Or, But it has to do with like your meaning of life, your your quest for what's the meaning of this life and what do I now? It's like there's a boldness with you, one of the words of tonight, boldness, that you're ready to embrace. You're like branching out and like, like Aries would be. You know, you're ready to branch out, and I feel like that you're more of a risk taker as you go through the summer months. And then I feel like that because of your more gregarious, assertive, but you're very allowing of other people as well. You appreciate, different than a lot of people right now, you appreciate other people's the way they arrived at their belief, you're looking at people's beliefs and your beliefs and you're getting a, um, a stronger, more secure foundation on what your, your life codes and your life beliefs, like you may be, like Joe mentioned, uh, uh, dispenses work. You know, you may, you may find that you're working more with your subconscious and you're doing some different kind of, I see with you walking meditations, like maybe it's nature or maybe it's outside or walking where you live. There's something about you wanting to have your eyes open as you're meditating and like watching the ceremony or watching what's going on between sky and earth as you're, and I see you releasing a lot of things. But then as we get to the right before the autumn uh, equinox, the spring and autumn are tied with each other. And I feel like as you get into Indian summer and coming toward that, that third week of September, I feel like that you're much more settled, that you've got a new course of like dedicated involvement. I feel like that you've met new people and you started to connect to new things and there's like a um, a sweet spot in your life. Mm. Hope does that help you? Well, um, it's, I don't know about the nature thing, but what's funny is that I am, I'm legally blind and my, my eyes have been getting worse. Um, mm. So, but I definitely feel the, the um the spiritual aspects you know so the inner vision so the inner vision because i've had a couple yeah. of friends that went through the blind thing and then actually their eyes got worse and then they got better which was interesting because they just they kind of had just mm. decided yeah. that if they got worse that means that's it kind of a thing but might be in a constant they had, like, got state worse of uh, for a walking year. meditation though if you're losing your sight you know like, walking within yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's 
it's more um, high strain and light sensitivity. So I can't mm. really, I can't technically be outside a lot. <laughs> gotcha. Um, can you walk it? So, can you but, be yeah. at night? Can you be at night? Like if you had a companion or a friend, um, like be there with you walking? No, because the light sensitivity again, I'd, I'd have to oh. be like in a place with no street lights. It's all light bothers my eyes. So wow. uh, especially it, any kind of high contrast, like street lights, you know. You know what would be interesting um, this is for you to do a do a meditation. Up. And ask your guides, what is it I'm to see? This is 2020. What 2020 perfect vision or about our visioning? Okay, what is it that I want to? What is it that I'm to be shown? What is it I'm to see this lifetime? And possibly just take it as a possibility to release from other walkabouts, potentially other incarnations that have to do with what was, you know, what what is it I'm to see about vision? in this lifetime because it may be that you're a star seed and that the way we see things on earth is a little intense for you and by maybe seeing what you need to see inwardly in a in a meditation there could be a, a healing that unlocks that you kind of unlock where you know there was like there could be some past lives for example we, where it was hard we to are see running really short of time i gotta okay i hope that i hope that helps you thanks for joining the chat gotta let you go um, if you can do a phone call in like 60 seconds, we can do one here. Let's see. We'll do it. We'll just make it happen. 714 area code. You're on the air real quick. Hi. Hey, um, uh, Brandon here. Just pull a card. Thank you. Okay. With what I got with you is it's called a leg up and there's polar bears on it and it's very Arctic and it's very friendly and it's a polar bear with its cub, but it's it's comfortable. It's not like dealing with climate warming or anything like that. It's very comfortable, and I feel like obviously that's a sign of the north direction of winter and also of enjoying the solitude and not having to worry about any kind of predator or any kind of threat in your life right now, and there's banners of celebration. So I feel there's something about as you enter into the second week of August that whatever was a at cross purposes or a problem has resolved. All right. Hope that helps you. Can you do another one? Like, yeah, we can probably do this last one because they've been waiting. Same thing. Four seven. Oh man, they hung up. Sorry. Well, I guess we're good then. It was four well, seven nine say, area you could code. Say their area code, and I could still pull a card. Four, they're not on the four seven nine. That's that's Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas. If okay, you're listening. there's a deep knowing, and what's interesting is I've got a card here with the sun and the moon and an owl on top of it, which is a nocturnal creature. They make their sound noises at night. And I see it's number 43, if that helps, which adds to a seven. This is July, the seventh month. But Al is the totem. The moon has a pale pink cast to it, like a flamingo salmony pink. And it's the moon and a smaller planet. So I'm going to say it's like besides the sun and the moon, it's also Mercury. So Mercury is direct in Cancer. So I feel like that they are working on their feminine empowerment, either a female they're involved with, or if they are a female, the empowerment and the richness coming into the richness of the powers of the yin or the feminine. Right on, Mary. That was awesome. <laughs> Love it every time we do this. Thank you, Joe. Back thank you, you guys for the call. Thank you guys, the callers, all you guys in the chat. Um, make sure you go get a reading like from Mary. That's, it's, yeah, it's really extensive and it'll really help you. Mary Ducina.com. M A R Y D U S I N A. Mary Ducina.com. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, same time, same channel. Thank you, Pacho, the Fringe FM team, staff, the patrons, all y'all in the chat. The music was by Chronox, the Steezy, Stevie. Stay tuned for the secret teachings right here on the Fringe FM. We'll see you guys tomorrow night, same time. Good night.